pray that Lord that you would just help us to hear uh, what the word of God says, what the spirit of God is saying to the churches. And Lord, it is so very, very, very important at the time that we're living in, I believe, to hear what you've got to say. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It says here in Galatians 3, 1, it says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or flesh or by the hearing of faith? It's obvious that there's a church here that, that had an amazing encounter with God. But somehow or other the enemy got in and started to sow seeds of discord started to sow seeds of, of untruths and these untruths started to uh, corrupt the church and the church started to go away from the things of the spirit go back to logic or flesh or law or whatever it might be and I want to say that I believe that this has been one of the enemy's greatest end of things that he's got one of his greatest weapons is that he brings in uh, things that seem right to our thinking how many people know that there's a lot of things logically that really logic doesn't really work we've got to be people of the spirit i thought sharon might be looking over my shoulder but in revelation 3 20 it says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone tall short fat or skinny hears my voice and opens the door i will come into him and dine with him and he with me then it goes on to say to him who overcomes i will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What are you hearing today? What do we hear today? Are we hearing just good ideas, good thoughts, or are we really hearing what the Spirit of God says? Do you know that you can hear and yet we don't hear? You know that we can hear, and yet we don't hear? You know, because there's a part of us, see, we are body, soul, and spirit. My body part of me is very, very much alive. My, I have a body that has a mind of its own. I have a body that puts demands on. I've got a body there that, that's, that's, that wants certain things. And so when the Spirit of God speaks, when God wants to say it might be fasting, it might be prayer, it might be things like that, straightway the body will react to what the Spirit of God wants to do. You know, the Bible says that the flesh is an enmity to the things of the Spirit. So there's a war that's raging in our lives today. And unless we take control of the law that's raging in us, that wants to do a displease the flesh, we'll become like the foolish Galatians and we'll go back to logic. We'll go back to just natural thinking and we'll forget about the Spirit. Every move of God has been birthed out of prayer and out of the move of the Spirit of God. A supernatural thing. I remember in 93, just how God came in and started to move in a supernatural way that blew us right out of our tree. There's something there that we weren't expecting. It was, it was like one week you're just having church as we thought it was church. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God came, and I remember standing in, in a bunch of uh, people, I think there was about 400 people in the crowd when I was in, a, in Papua New Guinea. They hadn't seen anything like this. I hadn't ever seen anything like this before. But as I lifted up my hand, a third of the people fell to the floor. As I, lifted, as I, as I walked back to the, to the choir or the music group, I, as I walked back to them, I saw the whole music team going down under the power of God. The drummer was just, as he just went straight out of his stool. Oh. Just amazing things. Uh, there was a, another group that just fell under the power of God. And within, say, five minutes, everybody in that place was on the floor. Just an amazing move of the Spirit of God. And then we saw, we went from, I think, 400 in that meeting to 8,000 in three nights. On the third night of that, of that time in Papua New Guinea, people were being healed and delivered and saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And it was just, it was just so amazing to just stand in the presence of God and watch God do what He does. 
And friend, it's a move of the spirit. How many people are hungry for a move of the spirit? You know, to be, it's good to be hungry, but I want to say this, that we also have to, as we're told today, we've got to discipline ourselves. We've got to, we've got to somehow or other fight the flesh that wants to control our lives. You can hear what the Spirit of God is saying, and yet we don't hear. Some people only want to hear what they want to hear. True? Just want to hear what they want to hear. You know that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death or destruction. I believe that we're living in very, very interesting times. You know, we can be around and sometimes the persecution and the problems, etc., seem to be bigger than the victory. I believe this is a time when you really got to hang in. And I've just written down a few things here that I believe that will, will just help us to remember that it's not by mind, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And if, and if I'm going to labor this point, I have to labor it because we've got a breakthrough. This, we've got a, like a, a brick ball in our head that stops the Spirit of God from getting inside of us and, and causing us to obey. You remember there was a time when a whole the city was besieged, that it was only a matter of time they were eating uh, donkey's heads, they were buying donkey's heads and dove's droppings and... And they even got to a point where they were born in babies. It was, it was a horrible circumstance and a horrible situation. And hopelessness had certainly covered the people. There was no way out. There was no, no answer. There was, it was just a matter of time. And, uh, and you know, the, the city was just in, in, a, in a bad place. But four leprous men on the outskirts of the city, they started to speak among themselves, not really knowing what was going on. But it was as a result of a man with a prophetic gift on his life. Friend, I want to tell you the prophetic utterance will break through and smash down strongholds. It will slice through Satan's domain like a hot knife through butter. The prophetic word. But friend, you've got to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the prophetic. Because when you hear the prophetic, the prophetic will sound so far away from the truth. So far away from what you're experiencing. And these leprous people, they, they were out on the outskirts. They were really in a bad state. They, they were hopeless in a sense. Because in the city they weren't welcome. And they, they were just outcasts. But a man with a prophetic gift spoke up and said, Hear the word of the Lord. And he spoke into an atmosphere that started to smash and break down the stronghold of the enemy. Friend, the only way we're going to actually break the stronghold that's over the Sunshine Coast is when the prophetic, when the anointed word of God, when whatever it is, anointed worship, it starts to penetrate into the atmosphere and break up that stronghold. Amen? It's just I tell you to talk like this. Friend, it's no good just coming to church because that won't make any difference. I went into a chook house the other day and I didn't become a rooster. Oh. It's just, you know, you've, you've got to break through some things to break strongholds. And I believe the Spirit of God wants to do that. And as this man spoke the word of the Lord, something happened that caused the anointing. Everybody say anointing. 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 It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And as that anointing came down, it fell on these four leprous men. And they started to head off towards the enemy. And God, everybody say God. God. God caused, see God caused the enemy to hear the sound of an exceeding great army. The Bible speaks about in the last days, or speaks about uh, an outpouring of the Spirit that I believe was in Ezekiel 37, when there was a lot of dead bones and dry bones and, and the prophetic came again and God came again and, and started to speak and say, do the, the, these bones, can they live? And the, the man said, I don't know. Thought it was a true question. But he said, prophesy. Speak the word of the Lord. And he told him what to say. And he began to prophesy over the circumstance and over the situation. And the bones came together and there stood an exceeding great army. But I want to tell you, the prophetic will cause you and I to rise up. It will put sinews on our bones. It will cause that which is dead to live again. Amen. I often say, don't die until you're dead. 
Come on, live, rise up. There's so much there that's available to us. And as we get hold of that and allow the anointing, and I, and I see it again as I said that anointing, I just see like a, like it's like a, I, 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 I can't explain it, but it's like a, can you, it's like a whirlwind, but it's clouds and vapor and fire and smoke and lightning and, and it's causing a, a, just an atmosphere to, to, to lift us out of that complacency and out of that lethargic thing that gets around us. How many people want to get lifted out of it? Yeah. Lift us up where I belong. I, mean, I, I, I don't want to be scratched around with turkeys when you're meant to soar like an eagle. And you know, the, these leprous men, they, they went out there and, and, and a whole army that was right on the verge of, uh, of, of triumphing. And as we look at the devil, and he looks like as if he's got uh, a, a death grip on, on, on society, on this world, and goodness knows what else. I was listening to the news the other day, and, and they were there was, there was talking about television and things like that, and they must have put a survey out, what do you want, what do you want? And, and it came back that um, there was just such an amazing um, support. They said we want more swearing and more sex in our movies. But I'll tell you, the, world has got, the devil has got the world by the throat. It's besieged the, the world, it's besieged the Sunshine Coast. And I want to tell you, friend, it's not just a church that's going to stop it. It's the move of the Spirit of God that's going to cause a, that thing to be smashed and broken and the strongholds and people will be set free. Amen? And then, you know, you might say, well, praise the Lord, that's good. No, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the person beside. I'm talking about you and me. Amen? That we can rise up. You see, there were the four leprous men, David and Goliath. David goes down against odds that were so enormously great. And he said, You might come to me against to me with a you might come against me with a spear and a this and a that. He said, But I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. See, it's the anointing, amen. It's not how big you are or how smart you are or how many scriptures you can recite or, or this or that. I want to tell you, I'm believing that children will come out of our children's church and they'll be so full of the Holy Ghost that they'll go home to their old daddy that's been drinking and boozing and goodness knows what all day. And then they'll walk up to their old daddy and put their hand on his belly and say, Come out of him, you cow! And that daddy will sit on his chair and be totally delivered. Amen. <laughs> You don't have to call for the priest. You don't have to call for the pastor. You carry the anointing. You carry the mantle. You carry whatever God has. The river of God is for you. So we've got to understand. Jehoshaphat, there was, a, there was a whole Syrian army came against him. He had no hope. He, there was hopelessness. He called upon the name of the Lord. And God says, the battle's not yours, it's mine. I will do it by my anointing. Everybody say the word anointing. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Lift up your hands and say, come on, I want the anointing, the anointing. We need the anointing, Father. We need the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Anoint us, Lord, anoint us. Anoint us afresh, my God. Anoint us, anoint us, anoint us. Anoint our singing, anoint our worship. Anoint our praise, anoint our witnessing. Anoint us. We to be anointed. Anointed, anointed, anointed. Be anointed, amen. The anointing, the anointing breaks the yoke. The Bible, you know, says in, in, in Luke there, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. I love that, amen. You've got to take the limits, the, 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 the limitations off your life. I, I'll tell you what, friends, I don't know about you, but we need... We need that ceiling smashed. Amen. You got to take the limitations off your life. We have the advantage. We have the advantage. Turn to somebody and say, we have the advantage. We have got the Son of God. We have got the Word of God. We have got the anointing. Amen. We've got the power of God in us. We've got the mighty Holy Spirit. We have the advantage. We carry the advantage. We have the advantage. That's an amazing thing. You've got to take the limitations off. 
Red Sea, there was another situation, the hopelessness, but a man lifted up a rod and the Red Sea just opened up and the whole nation walked through on dry, on dry land. It looked like an impossible Red Sea in front of them, the Egyptian army behind them. But they had the presence of God, amen? Yeah. I need the presence of God. Anybody else need the presence of God? Yeah. I need the presence of God. There's water came out, uh, out of a rock in a desert. Gold in a fish's mouth. Jesus has risen from the dead. He's alive, amen. amen. You believe he's alive today? Amen. I believe he's alive. Amen. That was a pre-interlude. I want to talk today about Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. But Mark 1 verse 11 says, then, says this, Then a voice came from heaven, said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. 1 John 3, 8, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that He might destroy the works of Satan, the Son of God. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. He was healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The devil goes around oppressing people. Jesus goes around healing the oppressed. Isn't that an amazing thing? Jesus, the Christ, the Son, of God. Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. He is the Son of God. The enemy goes around. I want to just have a look at Luke 4 with me. The ministry of Jesus Christ. The amazing ministry. I believe it's, it's just in a nutshell. Jesus speaks. In verse 18 he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He, God, has anointed me. You know, friend, if you can't stand up and say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, God has anointed me, you are suffering with false humility. And that is a curse. That is a curse. Because it will put limitations on you. It will put limits on you. It will put a ceiling above your head. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. Amen? Yes. Can we all say that together today? Can we say it together? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say it again. Amen. See, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. Okay, first of all, we're out there to preach the gospel to the unsaved. Poor people are unsaved people. Amen. I know a lot of people that have millions of dollars and they're poor. Because they don't have Christ. Amen. Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, Jesus spoke words. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is what I've been anointed to do. People heard, but they didn't hear. People heard, but they didn't hear. And because they didn't hear, they opposed what Jesus was doing. Their eyes were upon him. They could see that this man was different. They could see that there was something about this guy that was definitely different than the other people. But they heard, but they didn't hear. 
But the next day he goes into a synagogue. And as he went into the synagogue, it says there a man that was demon possessed facing in the church. Our sister said we need to be delivered. I think we do need to be delivered. that one go there. We need to be delivered from unbelief anyhow. And here, here, here he, he, Jesus comes and this man runs at him with a demon spirit. This man, he didn't only hear it, he didn't only see it, but he received it. We're in order to tell you, we are to be receivers, not just hearers only. We're to be doers of the word. How do you break the stronghold? How do you break it? How do you break it? I'm glad you asked that because I'm going to talk about that next week. God anointed Jesus. God did these things. And I, and I believe there that God wants to set people free. There are people that are bound. The devil goes around oppressing people. Jesus goes around healing the oppressed people. The downtrodden people. The people there that can't lift up their heads. The people there where the enemy is pouring in condemnation. Where the enemy just pours in all the rubbish and tells you all the rubbish about your life. I want to tell you, friends, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The blood will never lose its power. I am washed in the blood. My past is the past. I've only now got a future. I'm going to live it, amen. I'm going to live it. Some people just want to grow old. I don't want to grow old. I don't care. I'm not going to grow old. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. I'll tell this body what it's going to do. Shut up. <laughs> I believe that we're in for the right of our lives. If we just take authority over the enemy. People that are downtrodden. People there that, that are, are oppressed by the devil. I believe that there's a ministry today that, that to take the lid off, to be able to release people. And, and, and I believe that the enemy goes around uh, to discourage people. Wants to get you to quit. You know, a lot of people are quitting on God. You know, a lot of people that I've, I've been around for a little while now, you might have noticed. People that are on fire for God that are dead as dodos. People that once work with zeal and vigor and oh man today they're dead 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 people quitting quitting is a permanent response to a temporary problem how many times could you have quit how many times could you have quit I'm so glad we didn't quit amen I'm so glad. People used to talk to me. They say you got too much. You talk too much about the Holy Ghost. I don't care. I'm going to keep talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus talked about the Holy Ghost. You talk about the. I, I'm going to keep talking about the supernatural. I'm going to keep talking about a move of God. Amen. I'm going to keep talking about a revival fire that's going to burn. I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to experience. Amen. I'm going to see it. Amen. Quitting is a permanent response to a temporary problem. I, I believe, you know, we, we see a situation here and, and uh, you know, God is bringing His Son from heaven to earth. Came to a little girl and said, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you and you're going to bring forth and blah, blah, blah. I was sitting in my office the other day and I'm just thinking, Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Christ, the Son. I thought, God, you needed me up there. Because you see, why didn't you build a stairway of gold from heaven to earth? Why, why didn't you have thousands upon thousands of angels? Why didn't you have trumpets? And why didn't you stand at the top and say, This is my son? Didn't do it that way. You know why he didn't do it that way? Because he wanted a people that would love him for who he is. And not for what he but they think he is. Didn't want a bunch of robots. He wanted a bunch of people that would somehow or other. Be touched by the Spirit and be drawn in. Gathered. Yeah. 
have it up. Grow into the presence of God. Want some people that love Him for who He is, not what He can do. Not for what all the fanfare. Instead, it came so, so different. Could have had this big stairway there. Declaring, I present to you my son, the Messiah, the King. Now he chose to bring forth his son through a virgin called Mary. The Bible says that God chooses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He just wants a family. You know what God wants a family? We're part of a family. Remember that old song we used to sing? I'm not going to sing on Sharon. We belong to the family. <coughs> family of God. We just all get the big heart and go off. Go off. A bit old fashioned today, isn't it? Got a flashing on. Like Funny, you know. I believe we're going to see flashing lights and, and all that. And all this other stuff that is practicing for it. Man, all the smoke machines. I'm not even jealous because we don't have one. <laughs> Romans 8 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Led by the Spirit. Be aware of Satan's cunning devices. He wants to bring oppression on us. You know, Mary had a visitation from an angel. The angel came and Spoke to her. You have chosen to bring forth the Son of God. I believe that's what God wants for every one of us to bring forth the Son of God through our lives. Amen. Demonstrate His mercy and His grace. To a dying world. What would have happened if, you know, when she said, how can this be since I don't know a man? Said, but you're going to still, you know, Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and overshadow you. What would have happened if uh, Mary had said, no way. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no way. I, 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 that's, too, that's too much. And yet, how many times do we say no? See, if we're going to bring forth you have to say yes. If we want to bring forth this revival, you have to say yes. See, we, we advertise a prayer meeting. You know, if I had a show of hands now, how many people would like to come to the prayer meeting? I, I'm not going to do it. So please don't get excited. I guarantee everyone would put up their hand. But between now and Tuesday, we don't come. I reckon if we could... If we could get everybody at the prayer meeting, I reckon we'd see a revival. I'm not bringing condemnation on you, please. I know you say you pray at home, good, God bless you, thank you. But man, I tell you what, there's something in those prayer meetings. There's a presence of God in that prayer meeting last Tuesday night, amen. What were we, what were we talking about? The river. The river of God, I tell you what, it was awesome. Because that was, last Tuesday was gone, we can't do it again. Had to be there. Come along this week to the prayer meeting. See, Mary, she could have she, she could have just said, You're asking too much. Get. Right, right from the get-go, the devil was doing all he could do to stop the event. The devil will try to stop the event from happening. You know that? But we've got to say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. We, what was that song? I remember all one song. So, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Then you go outside and say no, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. We've got to stop singing songs, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory to God. See, from the get-go, when when this happens, Mary now she 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 goes out and she obviously. When she goes to Elizabeth's house and 
the spirit of God started speaking and saying, you know, Elizabeth is barren. Uh, she's now a child in the sixth month. And, and uh, so Mary goes and visits her. And as, as Mary walks in the room, the Bible says that the baby inside Elizabeth leapt. Uh, I don't know, I've had a couple of kicks. <laughs> but I, I cannot imagine what that would be <laughs> to a woman, the, the baby leaping in your womb. I can remember when uh, I think it was one of the kids there, Nancy was giving me a cuddle and she was well and truly pregnant and I was getting this little kick in the back and I thought that was something else, but man, leaping? And of course that confirmed it, so Mary goes back to Joseph and says, Joseph, uh, good news, <laughs> I'm pregnant. <laughs> and so what, is, what, what happens first of all? Uh, Joseph says, well, I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to marry you. I'm, I'm going to put you away. I'll, I'll, I'll try to honor you a little bit. But I'll put you away secretly. Rejection. He'd say, I don't know what a mother would have said. What would a mother have said to the enemy? Glory to God. You brought shame on the family. And so all this rejection, all this hurt, all this stuff is coming in. And, and, and somehow or other she just had to do this. The angels, but the angel speaks to Joseph. That's what the whole thing that I'm saying, we've got to, what are we hearing? We've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God's saying. Because the natural man looks at a situation and says, I'm, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to do it. And friend, this is in the whole of our Christian world. Well, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this way. But you've got to hear what the Spirit says. Because Joseph's there and all of a sudden the Spirit of God speaks to Joseph and says, don't worry about it. This which is happening to your betrothed woman is of the Lord. That cut across every bit. Can you, can you catch where I'm going here? When the Spirit of God speaks to you, it's going to cut across all your logic, all your understanding. When the Spirit of God starts to move, when God starts to move, we want it our way, hallelujah, God, you know, nice way. But I want to tell you, when, when the Spirit of God starts to move, there's going to be snot and hair and spit and goodness knows what. Okay? Is this okay? Or is not this... It's not just going to be a nice little thing. Now. There'll be people coming up screaming and pulling their hair out. There'll, there'll be demonic forces. Hey, come on. You've got to go back to the Bible. There's, there, Jesus walks into the church and all of a sudden this maniac runs out and screaming and yelling and spitting and goodness knows what else wrong fits. He just said, come out of you unclean devil. And he came out. <laughs> this is good preaching. Good preaching. This is it. I'm going to find out nobody else's. But what I'm saying is, friend, can you imagine the situation here? He, he, he does, he, Joseph doesn't know where he's coming or going, you know what I mean? It's not the way he thought it was going to be. It wasn't the way Mary thought it was going to be. You're going to put a white dress on. You're going to do this and you're going to do this. And, and walk down the aisle and everybody. But there's none of this. She's rejected. She's, she's put aside. She's, now the Spirit of God speaks. And uh, wait, wait, it happens now. Now Joseph's on side. Praise God. She's got one on side with her. Then, then they go to, to, to have the baby. And you, you, I, like... Here she is. She's right at the very end of her time. She's got the Son of God on the inside of her. She's carrying the Son of God. She's carrying the anointing. And, and she doesn't know her limousine picks her up. She's on a donkey going down the road. The last thing that Nancy wanted was she had a donkey driving her the road. <laughs> The moment Nancy felt pregnant, I got her to pack her bag. <laughs> we took her suitcase everywhere with us. I was prepared. Everywhere she went, I took the suitcase. We go, go, the suitcase come with us. I didn't expect what happened. Three o'clock in the morning. She said, it's time. I said, right, you can go. <laughs> Was it 
be a way I expected it to happen. I, I, I went back to sleep, I think. Yes, I had a shower. I got Now, here they are, they're in a situation, Herod it gets stirred up by the devil. How many people know that the devil's going to stir some things up? Yes. He'll stir some gossip up, he'll stir up some things, he'll stir up whatever he can stir up. And he stirs up and stirs up and stirs up. And again, jo 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 he hears again the, 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 the word of the Lord and says, get out of here, go to Egypt. And away he goes. Takes his wife and his little baby, away they go into Egypt. Herod kills every male child from two years of age down to, to zero. How do you think Mary felt about that? How do you think she, she would have heard this? The devil would have said, It's your fault. Is this is out of goodness knows what? She would have just felt so, so, I don't know what, frustrated about everything that's going on. Friend, we have to hear the word of the Lord and not look at what's happening around about us. If you look at what's going on around about you, you'll go down the gurgler. But I'm going to tell you, God's word must reign, must go above every other circumstance, every other situation. We're going to live by the word of God that says, In the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. We're going to have a revival of fire that's going to burn the Lord in your last part of time. We've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. Have an ear to hear. It's not always going to sound right. It's not always going to look right. It's not always going to be right. The church is going to take on a whole different... And I saw... I saw... I don't know why even want to try to explain it. Just roll clouds, rolling, 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 rolling like a... Oh, I don't know, just building a crescendo of, of power. How many people want something like that? I'm not just... Now I'll lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to God bless mommy and daddy and a few others. I'll see you fine that way. like a tsunami. Tsunami of God's power. The enemy and for bad, God will turn for good. God will raise us up. Raise us up. Raise us up. Raise us up where we belong. Let's stand up. Let's